Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme. This is kind of the flagship in Lenovo's ThinkPad product line. It looks every bit as much as a ThinkPad, but you've got a GPU on this one, a 1050 Ti, that might make it suitable for gaming as well. Now typically these machines come in a lot of different configurations and this one is no exception so we'll get into the pricing and individual configuration here in just a second but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from Lenovo so we're done with this it goes back to them all the opinions you're about to hear are my own nobody is paying for this review nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded so let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about so let's take a closer look now at the hardware uh, this one is kind of decked out, so this is a little pricier than the entry model. Uh, this is about $3,000 with an i7-8750H 6-core processor, an NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti GPU, 32 gigs of RAM, and a 1 terabyte SSD, an NVMe SSD no less, and it has a 4K display with touch. Uh, all of these ThinkPad X1 Extremes are coming in at 15.6 inches. But you can start at around $1,673, to be exact, uh, with an i5-8400H processor and the same GPU as this expensive one. It looks like at the moment, all of the computers in this line have a GTX 1050 Ti built in uh, with four gigs of video RAM, even at the low end. So that i5 version has the same GPU. It doesn't have a touch display, it's 1080p, and it has eight gigs of RAM and a smaller SSD but you can upgrade the RAM and storage later. So if you don't want to spend all that much initially, uh, get what you can afford, and then you can put in more storage and more RAM when you need to do that in the future. Uh, that's one of the nice things with the ThinkPad line is that they're usually uh, pretty upgradable. You can't upgrade the processor or the GPU, but you should be able to upgrade everything else. And additionally, uh, you get a little more battery life out of the 1080p version versus the 4K one here. So in our testing, we were getting about six to seven hours of battery life given the big display on this one. You'll probably get an hour or two more out of the 1080p version. So if battery life is important, you can nix the display. It's a little bit lighter too, actually, and you'll get better battery life for less money. So that's not such a bad thing to think about as you're pricing these things out. Uh, it's got this carbon fiber slash graphite uh, material that it's made out of like some of the other ThinkPads are, so it's very lightweight. The 4K version comes in at around 4.06 pounds or 1.8 kilograms. Uh, the 1080p version is lighter, 3.76 pounds or 1.7 kilograms. Not bad for a big 15-inch laptop to have uh, that little weight. So that was pretty nice to see on there. And because it's a ThinkPad, you'll already be familiar with the keyboard and mouse scenario here. They always feel the same, and this one is no different. So you have lots of nice travel here on these keys. Uh, they're very large and well-spaced. It's a white backlit keyboard on here as well. Uh, you also have, of course, the ThinkPad nub for using the mouse uh, with buttons above the trackpad. The trackpad itself is a click pad, so you can use it uh, like a modern trackpad, or you can pair it up with the buttons if you want. And of course, again, you've got the nub. There's also a fingerprint reader on here too. Overall, it feels every bit as good as other ThinkPads, and I think if they ever changed any of this stuff here on the top deck, there would be a revolt. So don't worry about that. It will feel very similar to you. Uh, the power goes in over here. Uh, next to that, you've got two Thunderbolt 3 ports. These are four-lane ports, so you should be able to use this just fine with a GPU if you wish. Uh, and you cannot, though, uh, get any power into these ports, so you can't use a single cable dock, for example. Uh, the reason is, is that the laptop requires 135 watts of power, so they've disabled power delivery over those Thunderbolt ports to get you the best performance. Surprisingly though, the power adapter has gotten a lot smaller from some other 135 watt adapters we've seen from Lenovo, and it's very lightweight also. This really surprised me. I don't usually focus on power adapters, but this one is a little unique. It feels pretty nice for a power adapter, so that was uh, nice to see, although I would always like to get power delivery over Thunderbolt when available. Uh, but these Thunderbolt ports do, of course, work with Thunderbolt devices, USB-C devices, and they output display if you need it. So you have that as a display option. You also have a full-size HDMI port. So if you don't want to occupy your Thunderbolt ports, you can use the HDMI port there for that. Uh, this little port next to the HDMI is for an Ethernet adapter. 
Uh, you have to get the adapter, of course, but that again will prevent you from having to use up one of these ports if you uh, grab one of those from Lenovo. Over here is a headphone microphone jack. On the other side, we have a, a full-size SD card slot. And one of the cool things about this SD card slot is that it takes the entire card in and keeps it there. Uh, so if you don't like your cards sticking out for uh, running around with your laptop, you can leave it in there and it will stay put. Uh, you have two full-size USB 3.0 ports next to that card slot, and you have a Kensington lock for locking it down on a desk. Now on the bottom, if I don't drop it, uh, you have a uh, fan structure here for keeping the GPU and CPU uh, cool, so you want to make sure there's some airflow going in there. Uh, the fan can get kind of loud on this one, not uh, terrible, but it's certainly going to be heard, especially when you're under load and utilizing that GPU. So if you don't like fan noise, you may not like this one, but it's not any worse than what we've heard out of other similarly sized laptops out there. Uh, but just be advised, when that fan gets going, you will uh, certainly hear it. Audio out of this is pretty decent for a laptop, but of course you'll get better sound by uh, plugging in a pair of headphones to that headphone jack over there. So that is the overall hardware. Let's take a look now and see how it performs. So let's kick things off with some web browsing. And as expected, this thing browses the web just fine. We looked at my YouTube channel running with a 1080p 60 video. That ran with no drop frames. We tested some 4K as well. That worked just fine. Uh, we also visited some websites, and you can see the nasa.gov website loads up very quickly too. If you're spending three grand on a laptop, we would expect it would be able to do those tasks without too many problems there. Uh, on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 191.1 on the version 1.0 of that test, and we got 110.9 on the version 2.0, a very nicely performing laptop for browsing the web. And again, I don't think you'll have any issues whatsoever uh, using this in that way. Uh, we also played some games on it because it's got that GPU and the 1050 Ti isn't bad for gaming. So let's take a look first at Fortnite, which is something everybody's playing these days. Uh, on low settings, we got between 50 and 80 frames per second. When we went up to medium settings, we got 40 to 60 frames per second. So it's in line with other 1050 Ti laptops that we have looked at. Uh, we also ran Rocket League, high quality at 1080p. Uh, there we were getting between 100 and 130 frames per second. So that was definitely uh, something you could play quite nicely on here. We even bumped it up to 4K with high quality, and we got there between 50 and 60 frames per second, so we were pleased with the overall performance there. The Witcher 3, we got uh, 70 frames per second on low at 1080p, medium got us around 60 frames per second, and high around 45 frames per second. GTA 5, we turned the settings to around medium and got between 80 and 110 frames per second. And when we turned a bunch of the options up to very high, we were able to maintain 50 to 65 frames per second. So overall, very decent gaming performance out of this, but in line with what you would get out of a 1050 Ti powered gaming laptop that you might be able to find for less money. Uh, so keep that in mind. It performed where a lot of these other devices we've tested with similar hardware have performed. And we were able to run the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, which runs in DirectX 12. And there we got a score of 2,399. And we've got it up with a few other Lenovo laptops that had similar configurations that might cost a little less. And you can see there, we pretty much got within the margin of error of those other laptops, including some that had the same i7 processor. Uh, so spending more for ThinkPad doesn't get you more performance necessarily, but it does get you a nicer overall industrial design and perhaps more upgradability depending on the model that you're picking. But again, you can buy the same hardware and something else for less. It just won't be as elegant. And we also ran the 3D Mark stress test to see how well it does under load. We got a score of 99.2%, which is a passing grade. It was interesting, though, to see this one running a bit hotter than some of the other Lenovo devices we've looked at, uh, but we were getting the same performance and not seeing a lot of throttling there. So overall, I think you will have a very good work experience with this machine and a very good gaming experience on it, too, when you're uh, done with all of that boring work. Uh, one more thing to check out, and that is its performance with high-end video. Uh, we ran Kodi with a 4K HEVC file, which is a 10-bit file running at 140 megabits per second. Uh, no drop frames on that one. Everything seemed to be uh, running as expected out of the Intel processor that is on board here. 
Uh, so overall, I think this is a pretty solid laptop from Lenovo. It's going to cost you a little bit, perhaps, depending on the configuration, but it's a very lightweight 15-inch laptop. Again, I would say look at that 1080p version unless you really want a 4K display. Uh, you will get better battery life out of the lower end display. It'll be lighter and it will also cost less. And again, I really like the upgrade options on this one, especially the fact that it has two M2 slots for NVMe drives built in. Relatively easy to get into the uh, backside of this thing and do those upgrades and uh, something that really, I think, is a pretty decent ThinkPad. But again, there is a price premium for all of this quality. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.